Hello and welcome to this Halo 5 Guardians video demonstrating the Medusa map and mode set. This map and mode set is designed so that people like myself, who have absolutely no sight, can play on a fairly even playing field with players who have full vision because they're blindfolded during the match. That might sound absolutely ridiculous at first, but once you see how the map works, it will probably make a little more sense. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, I am a gamer with absolutely no sight whatsoever, and you're probably thinking, well, you're blind, aren't you? And yes, that's technically correct, but I use the term gamer without sight because legal blindness can include residual and usable vision, which I don't have. Now with that out of the way, I will also clarify that on the other end of a party that I'm currently in is one of the co-forgers of the Medusa map and mode set by the name of Spartan Blood One who you won't be able to hear during this video just because of the way things are set up during this recording. But with that, we will, I think, start the map and get into explaining just how this actually works in practice. And now this is loading in. This is the audio you hear when a map is loading. And that's the deployment uh, sequence, which is actually common to most, if not all, of the Halo games, in terms of multiplayer at least. Slayer. And with that announcement and piece of score, we are into the map. Now, this map, this particular time, we don't have a time limit on, so we are going to be fine to demonstrate everything. So, if I, the idea for this whole map in terms of playing it is that you only use your left stick. And you can hear footsteps. That's me moving backwards and forwards in this case. So the idea is that you're not meant to use your right analog stick to look around or aim up and down because the map is designed in straight lines. For those who can't see it, it's essentially a square shape with corridors making up the four edges and corridors connecting in the middle of each of the four uh, four sides. So you have this, uh, this area here, which is top left, and there's an audio cue for that if you listen. There we are. There's that audio cue. Uh, and if we run through... So that's the sound for the edges, I should point out. But if we run slightly further, you can hear that there's actually a new, a new sound cue there, which is the glass flooring. Oh, and I've just picked up two grenades, two uh, plasma grenades. So there are different items scattered about the map, uh, one of which uh, are weapons and the other of which are various types of grenades. So those are plasma grenades you just heard me pick up as I ran through. And if I run... Actually, I might not pick these up. No, I won't pick these up because I've not used them yet. But this is top right. This is where the DMR is placed, which sounds like that. And we will get to demonstrating that later, but that is not a default weapon. We'll come to the loadouts a little later as well. But that sort of falling debris sound cue indicates the top right hand side of the map. So we're going to run down through uh, right mid over the glass. I apologise if the footsteps don't quite sound as they would in a normal match. That's because of Forge sometimes does that, unfortunately. But that's not really a massive problem. And there is a cue for the bottom right hand side of the map here. Kind of an interesting sound. A little difficult to hear in the heat of battle sometimes, but that's the same with all the cues. So we're going to run through to bottom mid. Oh, and that little marker there indicates that if I pull the trigger, I can actually shoot Spartan Blood, who is standing at mid, which unfortunately I will miss because I've actually not hit it immediately. But we'll come on to that at a later point in the... Hang on a minute. 
Oh, and actually, you heard that I didn't have the hit marker quite right there because I didn't immediately kill him, uh, which you will see is a thing that can happen if you hit your shot and you're completely lined up. Like that. There we go. So I've pressed uh, X to reload. So I'm going to run to uh, bottom left. And that's the audio cue for bottom left, just some uh, dripping water SFX. So we're going to run up uh, left mid, which unfortunately the glass sound effect wasn't playing there, but it definitely is there. And at top left, which I neglected to mention earlier, there is a battle rifle. Which sounds like that, because I'm shooting it against a wall. Now... We come to the subject, We well, we briefly covered it earlier, the matter of grenades on the map. The subject of grenades. Now, if I press left and right on my D-pad, there's that sound cue and this sound cue. The first, which is that one, indicates standard grenades are equipped. So if I throw one, it explodes like that. I actually have two. And the second cue which actually you won't hear because it automatically it uh, switches on its own, is the cue for plasma grenades. So I can throw one. And it makes that noise. And I'll throw a second one. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a second one. I've just picked one up. I can throw a second one near a wall, and I will actually stick myself. And that happens. So there's one cue I haven't actually covered. But first, we'll go through the default loadout. So the thing, the weapons you start with are the assault rifle, which sounds like that, and the gravity hammer, which you can get to by pressing Y, which has this interesting sort of fizzing noise. So we have this sort of fizzing noise for the gravity hammer. So I'm going to press right trigger to swing that. And it makes that noise. Which, if you hear that from a very short distance away, will probably scare the pants off you when you're in the middle of a match, when you don't expect it. But that noise applies to other players as well as you. So you can use that, if you're running around with a gun, you can use that to locate players wielding gravity hammers. So what we're going to do as well, there was a queue I mentioned that I hadn't covered. Rather, there was a queue I hadn't covered. So we're going to run through to that. So we're running to mid to bottom mid in this case and we're going to run up through bottom mid to get to mid itself now mid there's two things going on here there's a sort of shimmering cue which we'll come to in a second and there's also the wind cue for indicating where mid actually is in the first place you can hear both of those simultaneously there now if i walk forward and hold X, I will pick up the shotgun that the sort of disembodied radio announcer has just indicated over there. And the shotgun on the field. sounds like that and is extremely powerful. Uh, it's good for actually short and fairly long range. Uh, but we will probably... Oh, hang on. Yep. So actually we'll, we'll test that out. So I'm going to walk up sort of towards mid and pull the trigger there we go now the threat marker isn't actually on the shotgun because of the way it works but that's not necessarily a problem because it's such a it's designed as a short range weapon anyway so you can just pull that trigger and hit it normally uh, if you work hard enough at actually practicing to see how it works so now what i'm going to do as well is demonstrate how powerful the standard grenades are because we have those uh, because normally two grenades, in a, if you had the default settings on for a Halo game type, the standard grenades would kill you if you threw one to drop your shields and then one to kill you. Now with these grenades, if I throw it against a wall, <coughs> well, that actually didn't work quite as I'd expected. Let me try that again, be in a, a direct corner here. <coughs> there we go. That's what I expected to happen the first time. So, with that, being, with that being said, how is this actually all worked in practice? 
Now, as you've heard, there are there are the threat markers, which are very useful. On the field. And you can use those kinds of announcements that you've just heard there to sort of figure out where players might be. So a player might be standing at mid. And you can hit from quite a fair distance. Uh, that was with the assault rifle there. So that's quite useful. Now, how do you navigate around the map in terms of actual mobility? Uh, that would be the fact that, well, yeah, in terms of how you do that, you've got boost. You've actually got a double boost, which is really useful for escaping frustrating sort of areas where there's loads of players with gravity hammers, etc. And you also have sprint, which you can do... Oh, I've missed that run... I've missed that run by quite a significant degree. Let me try that again. So if I run backwards to bottom left, I'm going to run up and I'm going to hold X. Oh, almost. There we go. Now that normally works flawlessly. Let me see if I can actually do it properly. So kill myself with the grenade. I'm going to run... Yeah, sometimes the uh, the movement can be a little frustrating because you'll think you're in the right place and you're not. So I'm going to run up here, hold X. There we go, that's what I was trying to do. So you can use sprint. I mean, it's a similar speed to the normal walking speed, but it, it certainly makes for mobility options that you might not have otherwise in the sense that you can boost out of it and carry on moving at reasonable speed so you have those as your options now in terms of how you deal with certain scenarios that's all up to a level of sort of practice and study of the map which will take a while but once you get used to it it's not too bad now one of the one of the interesting things about this is i know spartan blood is now sort of in front of me to a degree but if he stands at mid and say I know he's going to get the shotgun. He's going to try. I'm going to try and prevent him from doing that. Ten seconds to shotgun. Or prevent him from using it. So if I come sort of just where the pad is, I can actually... Shotgun's up. I can actually just punch him. What I was trying to do there, though, was an assassination. So if I stand here and Spartan Blood comes to retrieve his shotgun... Then I can just assassinate him and eliminate the, the shotgun, shotgun problem from the field for a limited period of time. Now he can likewise do the same to me. So if I run, if I run up to get my my uh, battle rifle like this, and I don't see him coming, he can just straight up punch me in the back, and I'm fine. And that that eliminates me. But then, you know, even if you're boosting back, you can still get hit by things. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did there. I'm going to boost. I'm going to boost back. And still get punched. So you have to... So you have to kind of be just aware of everything as it's happening around you. Now, in terms of things like grenades. So, again, if Spartan Blood were to stand at mid and I have a plasma grenade. Then hopefully I can... Fling. Oh, okay. There we go. If I stand slightly upwards of, of bottom mid and fling, then that will take him out. And standard grenades work pretty much the same way, though, Shotguns again, be aware that any grenades you use can take you out as well, which, you know, that is a big problem. That was a standard grenade kill there. So, uh, in terms of the only other thing I can really think of to clarify with this map is the fact that well one of the one of the only other things oh that cue there was a normal grenade so if i throw so if i throw up if i throw these two oh that was good i didn't expect that to actually hit him but that was amusing right so if i run along here along bottom along the bottom of the map that noise there is picking up standard grenades which you can then fling along with your fat oh Okay, I managed to throw far too many grenades and I stuck myself. Great. Um, so the only thing 
that remains to really be clarified is again, I am only using one stick. So I'm only using my left analog stick to do all of the movement. So I, to clarify what I did there, I ran round bottom right, uh, ran through bottom mid, ran up bottom mid slightly, boosted, threw a grenade, and shot a bunch of assault rifle fire at Spartan Blood's back. Now, all this doesn't mean that every player is defenseless, far from it, because, you know, gravity hammers and running around the map are very, very useful in terms of evading enemy fire. Well, just enemy attacks generally, enemy confrontations. But in terms of how this match, is, how this map is actually played in practice, the idea is just chaos in the sense that nobody really knows what's going on, uh, especially if they're new players to the map. And just having blindfolds on allows for appreciation of the audio because that's how you're really meant to play it. But normally you can tell as well if people are using their right stick, uh, even if you know sometimes. You know, sometimes you'll see you'll see shots where you're running across, and a player's aim will suddenly alter to track you, to get shots that you don't think should be possible. But sometimes that's just the game's aim assist, which unfortunately, during testing, we realised we couldn't do anything about. So you know, who knows? Maybe for Halo Infinite, that might be a thing that's able to be altered. But for the moment, we just have to work with this, which is fine, really. It works well enough, uh, and I think. The best way to demonstrate any of this oh actually i've neglected one final cue which you won't see here uh, but there is actually a cue for the oddball because it's not just a slayer uh, concept that medusa actually works with um, we actually tested it initially and figured out that oddball would work as well so the way medusa oddball works is the ball is always spawning at mid and so it spawns in place of the shotgun and you run into mid you retrieve the ball and you essentially try and stay alive for as long as possible by running around the map throwing and catching the ball against walls uh, etc but that cue that plays for the ball continues to follow you once you pick it up so once you pick the ball up oh unintentional grenade throw there once you pick the ball up then everybody else knows where you are so it's very much an intense game type Though without the pressure of, well, arguable pressure of Slayer, given that it's completely focused on points. Now, with that, I think the best way to demonstrate all of this in practice would be to go into a match. Maybe one of Slayer and one of Oddball. So, the next thing you will see on this video will be the introduction to one of those matches. So this is a Slayer match. Not a bad first kill there, not really. Using my maneuverability to my advantage. Sometimes the orientation does get a little confusing. There we go, headshot. I'll take that. Taking the shotgun. Shotguns up. Mm. 
Ah, oh, that was unfortunate. That killed me. Oh well. Hammer trade. Almost. Painful. An interesting tactic that Spartan Blood is using there. The idea is not to sort of use the back wall too much as a means to end. Oh! So Spartan Blood appears to have picked up the shotgun, unless of course I picked up the ammo, which I never done. Ten. No. He's picked it up too. Shotgun ready. Yeah, the gravity hammer is a common weapon in close quarters scenarios. Just using my boost to navigate the map. The thing is with this, it's easier with uh, multiple players. It's never necessarily a, a bad idea to just fire a few shots off, because sometimes you might get... Oh. I'm still alive though, so that's okay. Shotguns up. Cool. Ooh, I don't know how I didn't actually not get killed by that. That was very interesting. I'm actually gonna reset my orientation. Ooh, and I got a kill as well. That was highly unexpected. Okay, so I'm actually going to... Oh, there we go. Going to retrieve a gun. Oh, and the moving headshot! I will take that. I would definitely take that. That was interesting. I feel like I should have hit him then, but oh well, that happens. Ooh. Oh, that's why. I'm up at this side. Throwing a grenade as you run isn't necessarily a bad idea either, because sometimes you'll, you'll hit things that you don't necessarily know are there, like players that are standing still. So fortunately, I am not standing still. Yeah, I was trying far too hard to get the assassination there. Oh well.
If we set the respawn time to be deliberately kind of as instant as possible. And how I didn't hit him then, I'm not just happy. Ow! Oh, that was my fault. Geometry. I uh, moved slightly backwards and onto a wall. That happens. It's happened more times than I can count, to be honest. There we go, there's the shotgun kill. Shotgun in ten seconds. It was good because he went he he tried to sort of attack me and I was uh, I was at his back all the time. Shotguns on the field. Oh my orientation. Yeah, you can see that the aim assist is kind of doing its thing. So I may just have to... Oh. Two minutes left. I was deliberately doing that to see... Well, partly to reset my orientation in terms of my aim, but also to, you know, try and possibly hit, hit my opponent if they were up there which isn't impossible Shotty in 10 Shotguns up Oh okay good shot that was interesting he just seemingly just punched me not entirely sure Oh well Now, why did I think that was a good idea? It's really not a good idea. Ooh. One minute left. My orientation is all kinds Shot of off at the moment. Ten. Thirty seconds. Come on, Shotguns we need on at least field. one more. Oh there we go. Tried to get me with a shotgun kill, but couldn't. Not a bad effort, though. Oh, not an assassination, but a melee kill. So that's good. And the final section of this video will be an oddball match. So that cue you heard at the beginning was actually the ball. Enemy has the ball. Well, I injured him. Not that that matters. Oh yes! Ball dropped. Grenade killed him. Now, the issue with this is that picking up the ball can be rather complicated. Ah, yes, the ball can be complicated. So now I need to... You have the ball. Boost to recharge. Oh. That was a terrible run by me. Ball 
drop. And <clears throat> oh, that was completely my fault. I tried to be far too good with that. Enemy has the ball. I got a hit marker. I'm surprised the ball hasn't reset in his hands yet. Ball reset. Ball reset. Ball reset. You have the ball. Yeah, sometimes the geometry can get you a little stuck. Ball drop. You have the ball. So the idea is with this to try and keep ball the ball dropped. as you stable as ball. possible, in the sense that it won't reset on you as you're running round. Ball dropped. Now that was completely on me. Sometimes you can use the ball resetting to your advantage, though. Enemy has the ball. Like ball that. Dropped. Oh, but the issue then is trying to actually pick the ball up, which is not as easy as it looks. You have the there ball. Go. Now, in all that time. Spartan Blood could have come along and killed me for it. Ball dropped. You have the ball. So my orientation is all kinds of interesting at the moment. Ball dropped. So I'm gonna wait. You there we go. Tried the run in, run in receive. Ball dropped. <laughs> wow. Now I know roughly where the ball should be. You have the ball. There we go. And I actually have the ball now, so ball drop. I could be making this actually not... Oh, there we go, okay. Enemy has the ball. Wow, he was quick. I'm actually going to need to take myself out here so that I can reset my orientation. I've actually... Uh, I just took myself out to reset my orientation in case you couldn't hear that over the explosions. It's going to be interesting to see who wins this. Ball dropped. No. You have the ball. Using my double boost to my my advantage. Ball dropped. And run in. You have the ball. And receive. <laughs> there we go. Again, like Medusa Slayer, this is actually better with multiple players. Ball dropped. On reset, the ball will kill you. Oh. Okay, it's gone kind of up and over here. You have oh, there the we ball. Go. Wasn't entirely sure where it had gone for a second then. Ball 
Bolt dropped. You have the ball. That may have been. Oh, okay, that was a good idea then. Running that way. I wasn't sure which way to run, but running that way was a good idea in this particular instance. So running up, uh, left ball mid. Drop. Gonna run. You have and the retrieve. Ball. See, that's a good way of doing it because then you don't have to stop running. Game over. Victory. See, there weren't many kills in that match, but it was certainly uh, a match where you know the intensity was definitely there in places. And with that final match, uh, we will end this demonstration of the Medusa map and mode set here. Thank you very much for watching, and feel free to like, comment, and subscribe.